So, hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I'm with Jackie Terabiel, and Jackie and I have been friends for a long time, and she has created this business that is really serving so many women in our community. She helps women find their style and own their confidence in a way that makes them understand who they are physically, um, how they dress, like she helps them level up. She has helped me personally. And so I really am so excited to have her on my interview. Her name is Jackie Terabiel. She owns The Small Town Stylist. The Small Town Stylist is a wardrobe consulting business, and she does so many things for so many women, but mostly she really helps women define their style. And what I love about working with Jackie is that she never makes me feel ashamed or that I should be a certain body size or that I have to buy into a certain trend. And what I love most about Jackie is she will come help me up level my style and often I don't even have to go buy anything new. So I know she's very busy with a thriving business and Jackie, I just want to say thank you for doing this interview with me because I know how important it is. The work that you do is important, but also I really think your story is important and how you went from somebody who had a jobby job to somebody who owns your own business now. So thank you for coming on and talking to us about it. Yeah. Thank you for asking me. No, I'm glad you're here. So can you tell us a little bit about your business, who you are and how you help? I mean, I know I gave you, I gave, I gave everybody a big idea, but I want them to hear it from you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I have a wardrobe consulting business. That means a lot of different things. I do personal and commercial styling. So on the commercial side, I am hired by businesses to style, um, advertisements, commercials. i do the wardrobe for the actors and actresses that are in the commercials and the shows and that kind of thing, which is very fun. But the most rewarding part of my business is the personal styling, which is working like someone with someone like you um, to do exactly what you said. We kind of figure out who they are and who they want the world to see through their wardrobe. We take a lot of things into consideration, like their lifestyle and their business and what they do and what they want people to see when they see them. And then we go through their wardrobe that they have currently. We see if what may, meets those criteria and what doesn't and what we need to tweak to get to that personal image. And again, like you said before, it's not about having the perfect body type or being, you know, the, the coolest dresser or wearing the labels. It's about right. representing who you are on the inside, on the outside to the world. Because whether we like it or not, people do judge us based on how we look. And we also, if we look good, we also feel great. And then we can go out into the world and do great things. And that's really what the most rewarding part of what I do is. Mm, I like that. When you, it's really important that the point is you're not about helping people get to a certain label or become label conscious, conscious or become trend conscious. You're helping them feel good in who they are so they can go out into the world and do amazing things. Exactly. Exactly. Like yes. Mm -hmm. So tell me, you used to work in industry mm -hmm. and can you talk a little bit about your experience in industry? Sure. Well, actually, right out of college, I, I worked in advertising and marketing in New York City. And then I got myself into working in the fashion industry for a brief time. I did. I was an assistant stylist in New York City. So I got to live the stylist life in New York, working with Bloomingdale's and Bacardi and these big companies and also dressing rock stars for videos and uh, tours, music tours and that kind of thing. That was awesome. Um, but it was also very tiring. And then I ended up moving, relocating to Syracuse, New York, and getting back into marketing and advertising. And that's what I did for 10 years, um, basically. Uh, and, you know, it was going to work. I loved where I worked. I loved what I did. Um, but I did get very frustrated with um, not being in control of what, you know, I had bosses. And even though they were great and, and mentors to me, and I learned a lot, and they gave me a lot of freedom. I also wasn't necessarily in control of everything the way that I would have liked to have been. Um, so there was that. And then um, I ended up having two kids. So I took some time off from work. And then I went back part time to that job. And then when I was there part time, my boss said to me, why don't you get back into that fashion thing? Because he knew I had come from a fashion background and uh, that I had 
sewn my own clothes and that I was really into it. So he's like, I'll help you create a website and a blog and you can just, you know, blog about it. So that's how this business started was really as a blog and kind of a side hobby for me to write about my experiences and write about my advice to women and that kind of thing. And from there, it kind of became a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you do it because you missed that part of your brain being um, excited? And did you miss like talking about the things that were so natural for you to talk about? Yeah, I did. And I think um, it was two things. It was because I was seeing, you know, the internet was starting at the time. I mean, it was only four years ago that I really started doing this, but, um, you know, that's when I really started seeing that there were blogs out there and I was seeing that other people were doing it. And I thought, well, I have a lot of information that I give to my friends Mm -hmm. and people at work who come to me and ask me for this advice. I should really start putting it out there into the world and maybe it'll help somebody. And, um, yeah, so that's really how it started. So the question I was going to ask you is why, Mm -hmm. why did you want it so badly? But I think you already answered that question. You wanted to help other women know what you knew. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, I think it was like, I saw people out there and I wanted to help them. Like I knew I could tweak things or I could help them, you know, like gain more confidence or whatever it was, but you can't just walk up to somebody and say, (laughs) can I help you? You know, I, I bet if you did this, you would feel so much better or whatever it is. You can't really do that. Mm -hmm. So it was my way of kind of doing that without approaching somebody, you know, I could put that out there and maybe that person would see it or somebody would see it. Right. And, and it, you know, it should be accessible. And so I wanted to make it my knowledge accessible to other people. When I met you, you were a stay at home mom who had just decided to go back to work part time. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I saw you had this, this, the small town stylist, a logo, a website and a blog. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't been in touch with you at that point. We had lost touch because I wasn't at the at, at Method anymore. And so I just saw you kind of coming up and doing this thing. And I was like, what is this? Because it looked super professional and it looked like it was really f- far into your business. And then when we talked about it, I realized like you were just really beginning, but it, it was so polished. Can you talk a little bit about where you were mentally when you made the leap from working part-time to starting this business, because what happens on social media is everybody's like, Oh, look at Jackie. She's just doing this. And now it's a thing. And like, she didn't have any worries or problems or thoughts about it. And so I'm wondering what actually goes on in your head when you go from being a stay at home mom with a part-time gig to I'm going to start this business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for saying that. I really appreciate that because I think when you are doing it, you don't always feel like other people necessarily perceive what you're doing to be, you know, as good as, as a, sorry about that, as good as, (laughs) as good as, you know, you don't exactly think that, you know, you think you're putting professional stuff out there, but you don't really know how other people are perceiving it. So I'm glad that that was the case. Um, I'm lucky because like I said, I worked in marketing and advertising, so I had the tools there that I needed. I had a designer who would help me design a logo, and I had experience in knowing that you need a logo and certain things to create this professional package, so I was lucky to have that experience. Um, But as far as leaving my part-time job, really what happened was I was getting, I, I didn't start the blog with services. I just started the blog. And then once I had this professional website, Mm -hmm. people said, oh, can I hire you? Is that something that I could do? And then I realized, wow, I could actually make money from this. There are people out there who want to pay me for what I'm doing. And then it kind of clicked like, okay, well, now what do I need to do to make that happen? And I realized that I could not work part-time and manage my family and my household and really put a hundred percent into this business, which I, as you know, cause you know me so for so long, I still don't, I still only work part time in my business. I'm not working full time in my business. I'm not putting in 60 hours a week into this business. I wanted it to be part time, but I really wanted to give a hundred percent. And I knew I couldn't do that if I was, um, you know, working part time at this other place. So I explained that to my boss and he was disappointed to see me leave, but he was excited to see me 
take this leap because he's an entrepreneur himself and he was, you know, trying to, he was excited for me to do that as well. So that's kind of how it came to be. So the the thing I love about your story, and this isn't, this, this isn't the case for every entrepreneur. So why I love bringing entrepreneurs to this audience is there's not one way to do it. Mm-hmm. And everybody thinks there's one recipe. Like first you build the business plan, then you go get your funding. That, like it's just it doesn't work like that for everybody. Right. You took a hobby and you morphed it into something that makes you money. You love doing it. You have a marketing background which a lot of entrepreneurs do not have and that's their big stuck point. That's just mm-hmm. that's just a bonus that you have. But it doesn't mean that somebody else can't do this. Um, you also, I want to really point out, you started out looking really professional with your website and your logo done. Now there are other people who will take a really long time to get that stuff done, but it works for them, right? Like, so I love that your story is I had a hobby and I have this particular expertise. So this is what I did. I didn't have a huge plan. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I did it anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want absolutely. people to hear that because they might not have a logo yet. They might not have a website yet or a business plan or know how to make money, but they know that they have expertise that needs to be out in the world so that it can help other people. That's what I'm hearing you say. Yes. And you just have to take that step to do it, mm-hmm. whatever that step is, whatever you have to do. Did you, you ever have any self doubts when you were sh- struggle or did you have any struggle when you were just taking those steps, not really knowing what you were doing? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, type A personality right here. I wanted my logo to be perfect. I wanted everything to be perfect. Well, I can't offer gift certificates until I have actual printed gift certificates, you know, all those little stuck points that you create in your mind. Yeah. Uh, but you just do it anyway. You know, you just, you just kind of do it anyway. You know, Oh, I can't go into people's homes until I have a professional checklist that's printed up and beautiful. Well, I still don't have that. And they don't, my clients don't care because I get them results without that tool, you know? Yes. So what do you think your mantra was that got you through those little stuck points? Those like perfectionistic things that would have kept you stuck. Yes, definitely. And I feel like that's the, basically the, uh, that it, it describes my entire life, really. Any time that I've had something that I consider to be a failure or something that I consider that I missed out on, it was because I let myself miss an opportunity because I was worried about, is it going to be perfect enough, you know, or I, I can't do it until I have this or whatever it is, instead of just taking the leap and trying it. So when I do those things, I always am successful. It may not be to the level that I want and it may not be exactly what I want, but I always am moving forward when I take the risk to do big or small things. I want to talk a little bit here. It's a perfect place to talk about the results that you get for your clients Mm -hmm. because you're taking a huge risk, right? Like you're, you're also not 100% home for your kids, which is a huge um, part of your lifestyle. Like that's a commitment that you've made, but you have to now balance Um, you know, having your business with running your family. Mm -hmm. And I know that to you, your client results are what fuel your excitement for the business. So can you talk about why this work is so important to you? Yeah. I mean, I, it's important to me because, well, I think when I first started liking fashion and wanting to get into the fashion world and, you know, 19 years ago when I worked in New York city, it was all a about how things looked and labels and get, you know, be seeing the famous people and going to the runway shows and all those things, which are super fun, but something felt like it was missing. Like I felt like people presume that I was superficial for loving those things. And really I wasn't, they just, they made me happy, you know, and getting dressed and feeling good about myself made me feel happy. And then I was better to, with the world. Um, so really what I want to do and one of my, my goals that I want to do is to show people that fashion and clothing and uh, style doesn't have to be frivolous. Mm-hmm. It actually is really emotionally deep for a lot of women. And, um, you know, and that's okay. You know, that's okay. How we feel is really tied to how we look or how we think we look. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of want to just like get women to understand that there's no right way to do things. There's no perfect way to do things and that you can be who you are and feel great about yourselves 
and then and express it in the world and through your clothes and then um and then go out and and you know achieve whatever you want to achieve in your life so it's really tied to that and that's what i think for me is the most fulfilling is seeing women who say I have no style or I don't know what I'm doing or I'm a total mess or when you come into my closet, you're going to die because it's just, it does, it doesn't make sense at all. And then I go in there and a lot of times we see that they do have a personal style. It's right there in front of them in the closet. They just can't see it. They're so blocked to what they've, you know, put together or sometimes it's all over the place because they don't actually know what they want to express to the world. So we have mm-hmm. to figure that out together, you know? Um, so really it's an emotional journey and it's a getting to know yourself kind of a process before you can really start putting your clothes together. And that's really fun and fulfilling for me and for my clients who say, well, oh my God, I, ca- I can't believe. I said, your personal style is right here. Look, it's here, 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 and here. And they're like, I had no idea, but you're right. You know, and wow, I'm doing pretty yeah. good. I'm not doing as bad as I thought, you know? Yeah. You know, what I'm hearing you say is that you like almost unearth or reveal it for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lot of times like we, uh, you know, I have a service called the, the um, closet edit, but really I want to call it the shop your closet service because we go in and I can put together usually uh, six to 10 outfits with the clothing that you already own in your closet, but you are so used to seeing them in a certain way, or you're just blocking it thinking I don't have anything that you don't see how you can put that together in a way that you love. And so I can do that for you and then maybe teach you also how definitely for you definitely are educative for sure it reminds me of what I do with my clients and like my I sometimes worry like are my clients going to get results but what I've realized about coaching is like it's not my job to do the heavy lifting for my clients like they Mm -hmm. I show them what they're capable of like I stand Mm -hmm. next to them and show them and you are doing the same you're saying you already know what you like and don't like you already know what works and doesn't work let me give you some permission and support and guidance yes exactly exactly and I and I think for me too, because I do really want my clients to be successful and, you know, get a lot of what we do together on the occasion that I've had clients that hire me for the wrong reasons, or they're not really ready to do the work. It's difficult for me as the business owner to accept that they are not going to make changes in their life when I've just given them those tools. But over the past four years, I've realized that I have to let that go. I can't, I can't do that for them. Like you said, I can't do the work for them. They have to be ready. So. It doesn't mean that you're not doing your job and it doesn't mean right. that you're not any good. It's this, oh my God, I talk to so many clients who feel the same way. Like it's it, not everybody's ready to do the work. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, and I think the reason that's nice, a nice thing too about being an entrepreneur is that you can choose who you work with. Yes. That's what I love about it. That's because when I worked in for someone else, I didn't get to choose who the clients were. And a lot of the clients didn't want to listen to what we had to say, even though they hired us to give them advice. And that was extremely frustrating for me. And so as a business owner, I try for the most part to figure out when I'm talking to somebody, do they really want to do this? Are they really ready for it? Is it really going to make their lives better? Or are they hiring me for the wrong reasons? Mm -hmm. And if they are, I can say, I think that maybe you're not ready for this, or maybe this isn't something that you um, want to do. That's why we have a discovery call first Mm -hmm. to make sure that we are both uh, going to be able to help each other out. I call that coachable. Is this person coachable? And I can often tell on a discovery call, like this person's not ready to do the work or they want me to do the heavy lifting, but that it doesn't work that way. Like you can't come in to somebody's closet and, and help them overhaul it if they're not willing to listen to the changes that you suggest and really do the work. Yeah, exactly. And because this is such emotional work and personal work, sometimes that's just not going to happen and that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe then I find out that down the road, six months, you know, they call me and say, I finally was able to do what you told me and I feel great. But you know, it took them six months to get there. You're like, I know, I told you that six months ago. I know, I've just been waiting. I know. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so when um, you had this dream to make money doing this thing that you loved and to help women get results, um, what needed to shift in your life in order to make that happen? 
What changes did you need to make? Well, I had to make myself a priority. Um, I had to make my work a priority. So I had to make promises to myself that I was going to put these t- this time first towards my business and other things that would pop up um, were going to have to wait and that was going to have to be okay. And that included my husband and my children and my home um, and other commitments that has everybody so survived? Are they all okay? Yes. Everybody <laughs> survived. Everybody survived. And I feel too that everybody is better for it too. You know, I had a story that was running in my head that if I wasn't there for them all the time, that things were going to fall apart and they were not going to be able to survive or they're not going to be able to do things or whatever. And that's just not the case. And in fact, they all stepped up. I mean, when um, I have a client uh, on a Monday night, you know, they, you know, my husband takes the kids to their activities and my boys, you know, make themselves a snack after school and get their homework done on their own. And they all step up to make it happen so that I can go and do what I need to do for work. And so I would say I definitely didn't give everyone enough credit and I didn't give myself enough credit. So, you know, if that's what's holding you back out there, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe give it a try and see what happens. I think you'll be surprised. I want to talk a little bit about why we do that. And I love that story that they all are surviving. Yeah. Um, it's our, it's really our ego, right? Like the whole thing is like, oh, but I take care of everything around here. If I'm not here, this is going to go to hell. Mm-hmm. And what you, so you kind of have to get out of your own way ego wise. Like, okay, I'm a stay at home mom with this hobby, mm-hmm. but I want to make it a business, which means what? Like that means I have to redefine myself. Right. And then it means I have to give some other people <sighs> training in how to do these things. I need to give them time to show up and do them. And then maybe they're, maybe they need to be managed a little bit. So there's always a lot of, like, it's easier if I do it myself for moms, especially. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of retraining there. And then there's the, you're looking around, you're like, oh my God, they're totally fine without me. What does that mean for me? So right. It's a big ego trip uh-huh. that we're just trying to get over. It is. I think, too, it's, for me, it was um, a guilt feel guilty, like I should be, this, and uh, I, uh, like you said, well, this is just a hobby, and am I putting what I want to do in my hobby ahead of myself? Right? Very selfish, yes, exactly, you know, it, that's how it, it felt, like, kind of work through that, and, and then when you start bringing in money, and you start building your business, and you realize this isn't a hobby, this is a real thing, Mm -hmm. then it starts to, you start to kind of reconcile that in your mind, like, okay, this is not just for my fun and pleasure, this is to contribute to my household, and to teach my children that it's important for your mom to have a job, and um, that your mom has to prioritize her life just as much as she does for you and all these things. And um, having boys, I feel like it's really important now. I kind of forced me to teach them how to do the laundry and the dishes and cook, and they can do all those things to be self-sufficient. And so it really benefited them, I think, for sure, too. I think that's a great point. So it was good for you, and it was good for them. Mm -hmm. It's good for everybody. I think so, for sure. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you wish you had known prior to all of this, prior to making the little shifts and um, going from the job part-time to entrepreneurship? What is something that would have changed you if you had known back then? Well, I wish that I had done this sooner. Honestly, mm-hmm. I really do. I would say, I, I don't know if it really would have worked because of the market, or at least that's what I tell myself that the market wasn't really ready for this. Or I know that I, maybe I wasn't ready for this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have amassed this, you know, 15 years of working experience and life experience and all that. So, um, you know, that made me ready, but I would tell myself to go for it even sooner and just try to do it even sooner, you know? Um, but, you know, you live and you learn and you don't yeah. know. So, but I try to remember that now when I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't do this or maybe I shouldn't right. try that. Well, right. I'm not, I, you know, I'm no spring chicken anymore. I got to make this happen <laughs> now, you know? So now's the time. 
So now that you've done it, and I know that you want to scale and that you have ideas about how to do that, you have ideas yeah. about how to expand and bring your message to more people. Um, how will the world be a better place because of the work that you're doing and the sacrifices that you're making? Like, mm -hmm. why is this so needed in the world? Well, I think that, you know, I think, I think that I'm just a practical scale. Um, what I do is really just um, branding, you know, personal branding and the way the world is right now, everybody has a business because we can do so much with technology and online and we have our social media and you're, you know, the young people, young children are already know about my kids or who are 13 and 10 already know about branding because they're doing it on their social media and their Snapchat all the time right. it, subconsciously they don't even know it so I think for me it's important to help women especially women who are my age who are you know big, um, generation X we didn't grow up with this uh, having to constantly be putting out an image and the image that we did want to put out when we were teenagers and in our 20s is totally different than the one that we want to do now um, and it's important to help teach women how that is important to their brand and to their businesses to continue to grow and to their careers you know um, not everybody was kind of brought up or taught how your personal image and your dress code can affect positively or negatively how successful you are, whether you get that job promotion, you know, uh, whether your business takes off that kind of thing, you're building a trust with people through how you look. And so I feel like it's needed more now than ever for everybody, not just women CEOs or uh, women who are in big cities, but everywhere. So I feel like if I can, you know, I want to go uh, virtually expand my business so that I can help women all over. The name of my company is The Small Town Stylist because I live in Syracuse, New York, which is not a small town, but it's smaller than New York City and L.A. and some of the places where I've been working before. And I feel like style can be available to everybody, whether you live in a small town or you live in a big city. So that's how I want to impact the world with what I'm doing. I will tell you, and this is just like me speaking as a client of yours, that when I owned a fitness studio, I walked around in fitness clothes all day long and everybody was like, aren't you so lucky? And for a long time I, I thought, oh, I am so lucky because I get to wear just like really comfortable clothes all day long. But eventually that wears on you and you don't see yourself as professional or even intelligent, certainly not attractive or sexy. And I think that it happens when I was a mom, it was the same thing. Like when I was a stay at home mom, it was yoga pants every day and some big giant shirt and like a big messy knot on top of my head. And that was kind of every day. And it's acceptable to walk around in like this athleisure, which is wonderful. And at the same time, I did not feel like I was showing up as my best self. Mm -hmm. When I had to transition out of owning the the fitness business into owning a coaching business, you have really helped me find who I wanted to show up as and find my style voice is what I would say you did. And you did it without judging me or, you know, saying, well, if you'd only lose 10 more pounds, then you could wear this. It's, it's always like, this is where you are right now. And this is where we're going to, we're going to meet each other. And I just, I think like, I think I've told you that now when I go into my closet room, um, I, it's fun. It's like, mm -hmm. there's plenty of choices in there. I don't need to go shopping all the time. Right. I just learned so much about what works for my body, what works for the current styles. And I'm 48 years old. I'm really not that interested in trends, mm -hmm. but I can be fashionable without being trendy. Right. And I also don't need to spend a fortune on certain labels that, that, that like, that's not important to me. And if that were important to me, you would help me get there, but that's not mm -hmm. important to me. Right. So I think that what you're doing is so important. And I love that you mentioned before that it could be one of those businesses where people are like, oh, that's just a luxury item or it's just fluffy. Right. But I, cause I have a lot of clients who feel that way. Like they sell skincare or they they sell some kind of self uh, improvement for people, but it's really all about feeling like who you want to be showing up as feeling right. confident. That's what you're selling, Jackie, right. like exactly. a woman stepping out of her house and into the world and saying, I'm ready to show up today. I don't have to hide. Right. Exactly. And that's how I and feel that, that. 
Well, I'm so glad. And I mean, that's how I want everyone to feel. Everyone should feel that way. I don't. Another thing is when you go into your closet and you just look and you, you feel like, oh, I have to buy these things or I can't look good. Right. Or you, you know, that's another way of kind of like negative talk to yourself. And also you, you know, you're just going out and spending money, which is another thing that's going to create guilt yes. in your life. So, you know, because you're just buying random things for just no, no reason, just to fill your closet or to fill a void. Mm -hmm. So you really need to think about what's the void that I'm trying to fill. And what I want to show women when I go in there is that there's no void to fill. You are whole on your own and you've got everything here that you need. So let's put it together. And, um, you know, that's, you know, habitually shopping is a thing that I have with a lot of my clients that they call me because they say, I have a shopping problem. I have so much. And once we go in and edit and decide what's working, what's not, they stop buying uh, black, the same black blouse <laughs> over and over and over again. They have 20 oh black God, blouses, right? So guilty of that. But they're yes. only doing it because they're trying to fill this void or they're, they're not feeling good about what they're doing. So we, I teach them what styles are working for them and why. And I show them how you've already got things here that you need. You don't need to go out and buy that. Then when they go shopping or they feel that trigger to buy that shirt again, in my, they're hear me in their head saying, I don't need that. Jackie says, I don't need that. I've got everything I need already and I'm not going to do that. And then there's no guilt, you know? I've so, personally done that too. You've yeah. helped me with that. So mm -hmm. to, to wrap up, yes. what advice would you give other creative women who are maybe like where you were in the very beginning? They have um, something they're really good at and maybe it's a hobby. What, what would you tell them? Beyond what you've already said, because you've already really given good advice. You've said, start earlier than you think you should, mm -hmm. and don't worry about it being perfect. But what else would, would you want them to know? I would say uh, reach out to other people because you can't do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I had to learn. Or you can, you could, I'm sure you're very smart. I could do everything myself. I could design a logo myself. I could do my own website if I had to. Everybody could figure it out. Right. But the amount of time and energy that it would take for me to do those things would take me away from being with my clients and building my business the way I want. So don't be afraid to make an investment and to trust other people to come in and create your vision for you. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that also I think kept me stuck a little bit in that, you know, like when I was designing my website, who was I going to trust with this website? You know, that's the expresses who I am. And it's like, once you just make that decision and go for it, it's just like painting your room. You're not committed to that paint color forever. You know, of course it stinks if you have to redo it, but you're not committed to anything forever. So give it a try. I tell my clients that with outfits. I was going to say, you've told me that right? in my closet too. Yeah. You're like, what? Yeah. put it on, see if it Who works. Cares? You know, wear it for a day. Yes. If you come home and you still don't feel good in it, Forget it, but yeah. most most likely you will somebody will compliment you and say how great you look because you're doing something different, and then you'll say, "Oh, I feel really good in this. Why didn't I do this sooner?" So in your business, apply that theory to your business as well, and just it's all an experiment. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it's all an experiment. Yeah. So tell us how we can get in touch with you. Okay. Well, I have a website. It's www.thesmalltownstylist.com. Mm -hmm. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm on Facebook and I have a private Facebook group that's just for women. So you can join that by going to my Facebook page. Um, you can join my email list and I'll also give you, um, you know, like you could have access to my blog that way and we're doing events and we've got a lot of fun stuff planned for 2019. So being on my email list is a great way to um, you know, kind of keep up on what's happening and, mm -hmm. and really create a connection between me and you. So those are the places. Are you at the small town stylist on Instagram and yes. Facebook? Yes. Okay. So that's how people can follow that's you. That's how there. people can find me. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm going to po uh, poke people to go to your website because you offer a lot of good services. Like people think that you do one thing, but you really do quite a lot of other things. Like you will go shopping with people and you can actually get on zoom or Skype with people and help them with an outfit for an event. Um, you've done my closet edit, but you've also styled uh, photography sessions, mm -hmm. you know, so yes. you've done, you do everything. So I'm going to point people in the direction of your website so that they can okay. see 
like all the possible ways that they could up level their style and kind of find their own style voice. Yes. And if there's something on there and you're like, I, this happens a lot. Well, I don't know if that's really for me. Reach out to me and email me because really everything is customizable and it really is customizable because uh, once I get there, once we talk, you may need some of my services that are listed, but you might need something different. Everybody is an individual and everybody's at a different place. So we just figure it out together what you need and make it happen. You really do a great job. It's so, Thank it's you. so, if you're worried that she's going to judge what your size is, what your weight is, what your closet looks like, what level of clothing you have, she's not judging you. She's amazing. <laughs> Hire her. She changes your life. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Jackie, for giving us your time today. And I really encourage people to at least follow her because she's, her feed is great. She's totally fun to watch and she gives a lot of great advice. So join her, her Facebook group also. There's a lot of good stuff going on in there. Thanks, Jackie. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay.